you today. We ask your blessing and your covering upon all that we do. Release our worship, Lord, to bring glory to your name. And we pray, God, that you would just illuminate your word to our hearts, that we would be encouraged and strengthened and know how better to live for you, we ask. Bless what we do this day. Bless the houses that are listening, Lord. Open our ears to hear what you by the Spirit might want to say to us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like to stand, we're going to start this morning with my testimony.
my testimony. This is my testimony. Thank you.
that you are with us. You are for us. You are not against us. You bless us as in our coming and in our going. Father, your, your face shines upon us. Lord, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for all you are to us. We thank you, Lord, that you are our protector. You are the one that brings peace. You are the one. You are the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we, you are for us, and we are for you, Lord. We are for you. This morning, we want to make room. We want to make room in our hearts. We want to make room in this place for your spirit, for you to breathe, for you to breathe in this place, for you to bring life, for you to be present. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Sing that again. 
Just, just take this moment right now. Take this moment right now. I just believe God has just brought in a peace, and I, I believe that He's just welcome, welcoming us to come into that, to come into that this morning, to come into that. So this morning, come on. Don't stop. Don't stop your worship. Don't stop your cry to the Lord. But keep pressing in this morning. Keep pressing in. Believe that God is moving right now. He's moving right now in this place. And that if you would step in to his presence, that he would fill you with his love and his joy and his peace. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, in the name of God. 
Jesus, the only name that you ever say. I will not be 
the only firm Thank you. 
just reminded I'm reminded of of how God how our worship to God is like a sweet aroma like a sweet aroma that's that's really what I sense this morning <laughs> that our worship is a sweet aroma much joy that brings the Lord. I just see His throne room and echoing in His throne room is the praises of His people, is the worship. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. Yes, God. up your worship in this place like a sweet aroma right into the throne room of God This time is just between you and God. Just between you and God right now.
find strength in his presence. You find strength in his presence. There's more to worship that see that 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 you can see. For when you worship, you pull out your sword. When you're worshiping it's not just in the physical, but it's in the, in the supernatural. That you're fighting. You're fighting against the plans of the enemy. I'm reminded of David. David, he, he was known. He was known for worship. He was known as a mighty warrior in the physical But he was known for worship. He worshipped God. He worshipped God. He wasn't ashamed of worshipping God. He wasn't ashamed of it. But he embraced all who God was. When he worshipped, he gave everything he had. Everything. So him defeating Goliath. Was the outcome. It was the outcome of the time that he had spent preparing himself in the presence of the Lord. Worshipping sharpening his sword, sharpening his sword so that when he came against that enemy, he knew, he knew that God was in control. He knew that there was nothing he could do in the physical. He knew that it was all down to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, God. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it's... We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into this place. Thank you that you are here. We know that you are here. We thank you. Thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus, your overwhelming presence, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you for it. We thank you for blessing us with it. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Oh, God. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We thank you, worship team. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I'm reminded at the start of of 2020, I remember God, God gave me a scripture. He, um, he gave me a scripture for for twenty twenty, and uh, I believe it was uh, talking about the Lord's chosen fast. Now, I remember reading through this scripture again and again and again and again and again and just mulling over. And I'm reminded of what God was speaking to me through that scripture. He was telling me to pray, to seek him, to not pull back 
to go deeper with him. This was before COVID. This was before all of that. God knew what was happening. God knew what was, what was coming. And this was him saying, you need to be ready. You need to prepare. Now, I don't think anyone was prepared uh, for 2020 and what it held in everything that happened. I mean, aside from COVID, we had many other things go on around the world. Many positive and many negative things happen. And I just reminded that of what God said at that time. to pray and seek him, to be prepared, to be prepared for what was coming. He knew what was coming. He didn't cause any of it, but he knew exactly what was coming. He knew what we would face in 2020. And I think sometimes we can hear God tell us to do something. He can give us a word, he can, um, a direction. And sometimes we might not do what he told us to do. See, I, I wasn't completely prepared, as most people weren't, for COVID or for any of the things that, that went on. But God had said to me, prepare, pray, seek him. What happened to me over 2020? It's, it's almost like praying became harder. Prayer became harder. It was harder to find time for God. Even though that's what he, he, he told me to do. He told me to seek him intentively, to press into his presence, to worship him, to praise him. But however long along 2020, I would find it almost impossible just to sit down for five minutes to pray, even to worship. As if something was stopping me from praying. See, I feel like God, this morning, through, through this meeting, I think that, that he's wanting to speak, to say that he has a plan, that he has a plan, that we might not always follow directly in line with his plan, we might sway here and there. And other times we might be directly in line with what he is doing or completely away from it. So God has a plan. He has a plan. And... You know, in saying that, for all the words that God has given you, for all those promises, he, he has a plan. And you know what? From afar off, he saw what would happen in 2020. He knew what was going to happen. And his plan 
hasn't changed. His plan plan remains the same. COVID hasn't ruined God's plan. (laughs) It might have ruined a lot of... um, a lot of people's holiday plans, their work plans, plans with family. But it hasn't ruined God's plan. So we can know that God is always in control. He's always in control. He never lets go. He always knows what is to come. He knows. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Isaiah 44, 2 to 3, says, Thus says the Lord, who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. I have poured, I will pour out water on him, who is thirsty, and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. He has a plan. He has a plan. You know, um, I recently went up to um, up to visit my family um, up in Queensland. As uh, some of you might know, my um, my pop had a little bit of a fright, so I um, just felt to go up. Um, I'm just reminded, you know, wh- when you're going on a plane. The only thing you have to be mindful of, well, now you have to be mindful to put a mask on and uh, I guess waiting times, restrictions, borders closing. There's a lot of more, a lot more things you have to be mindful of. But to, be, to put it straight forward, you, you parents just have to hop on the plane. You don't have to do anything else. You just have to sit down. You know where your destination is. But you're not, one, you're not the one flying the plane. You know where you're going. But you don't know which route is going to be taken. And that's because that pilot's at the front. He knows which direction to go in. He knows which way to go, how high to fly, how low to fly. Or at least you hope so. The same can be said for God. You might not know how you're going to get to where God's taking you, but God knows. God knows. You just got to follow in His way. You just got to follow in His way. Trust that He knows better. I don't know how to fly a plane. I'm not going to go up to the cockpit and you know and knock on the door and say you're flying it wrong I think you're going you know this this much in the wrong direction 
Am I going to do that? No. No? I don't know what direction I'm going in. I don't, I don't actually even know. North, south, east, west. No. no. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you how high or how low you're supposed to fly it. But they know. And God knows. You know, God has a plan for our lives. But that doesn't mean that you have to follow in that. Now, what I mean by that is, of course, we should follow in God's way, in that plan for for it. But it's a choice. It's a choice that God, he he, he still gives us that choice. It's, It's free will. He gives us that choice. I remember... When I was 16, I so wanted, I I loved working with wood. I loved building. And I really wanted to do carpentry. And I finished year 10. And I decided, oh, I'm going to pursue carpentry. So what did I do? You do the things that you do to go and pursue carpentry. One, you you go get your white card so you can work. And you make connections with people who who would be able to take you on as an apprentice. I already had a friend who's... um, who worked as an apprentice. I had a connection there. He actually did say to me, if you wanted to um, ever do a carpentry apprenticeship, come see him. He would, you know? And so I did. I tried. I tried going through that way. And the door was closed. I tried going in another way. God led me to do my. Uh, to do Bible college that year. And I get to the end of that study, at the end of that year, and I come back and I, and I go, I'm going to go and do a carpentry apprenticeship. All the doors close. No opportunities to do it. It's impossible. So I go back to co- Bible college for the second year. And I'm getting to the end of that year, that second year of Bible college, and and here I'm saying, oh, I, I'm I'm going to go and to, you know, pursue a carpentry apprenticeship, and I go and pursue it. And at that point, I had someone speak into my life. And I thank the Lord that there was someone to speak in my life. Because to tell you the truth, the way which led me down here, the path that led me down here was all of God. But I I, I spoke to that path directly. Someone told me about an opportunity to come down and to in turn as a pastor. And I said, I said directly to that person, oh, I'll get back to you, but I'm planning on doing a carpentry apprenticeship next year. I said directly to that person. That's what I said. And then however long down the track, here I, here I am at a Christian conference, and one of my, um, one of the other students in the Bible college, he spoke into my life. I was telling him about my plans to go and do a carpentry apprenticeship, and he asked me this one question. 
Why do you want to do a carpentry apprenticeship? See, I wanted to do the will of God. It wasn't that I didn't want to. It wasn't that I didn't want to follow in God's way. But I'd never asked my question. I'd never asked myself that question. Why? What is the reason behind? And after I thought about it, it only took a moment. I realized that the reason why I wanted to uh, do a carpentry apprenticeship was so that I could buy a piece of land in the middle of nowhere, build my own house, and then live away from everybody. Now, how is that God's plan? How is that God's plan? I mean, you can't be ministering, you know, when there's no people around. You're not going to get the trees saved. But I, I, I was so set on doing this carpentry apprenticeship that I didn't realise it wasn't even in line with what God wanted me to do. In fact, it was taking me away from God. I didn't even see that. The funny thing is, I actually, at the end of that year, before I had this conversation with that guy, I had actually gotten in contact with someone through my brother's church who was a carpenter looking for an apprentice. I had set it up. But then when I, I knew the why, I went back to my brother and, and I said, could you cancel that? Could you cancel that? Because that's not God's plan. That's not what I want to do. You know, the funniest thing is, that door was open. I could have gone through it. I still could have gone and done my carpentry apprenticeship. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here in Canberra if I did. Who knows where I would be. But I certainly would not be in God's will. I certainly would not be serving God to the extent that I am now. Because, And it's not that I don't love God. But that's how, the, that, that's how subtle that descent is. You barely notice it until you hit rock bottom. So until I, until I uh, heard that, I uh, asked myself that question, until that question got asked, I didn't know. So then I went back to God and I said, God, I cancel all my plans. I cancel my whole futures in your hands. Every single decision, every single thing, I'll follow you. At the end of that year, I got an email notification that my white card had expired. As if to say another confirmation, that door has closed. And I praise God. I wonder. I still wonder, though. And I think I used to wonder. Why did those doors close? Why did those doors close in the first place? And I thank God for this. It's this one prayer I would pray all the time growing up. Lord God, would you open the right doors and close the wrong doors? Make every crooked place straight in the name of Jesus. There was no way I could walk through those doors because I already prayed that God would close them. I already prayed to God that he would lead me in his way. 
I had just forgotten about those prayers. So I thank God because I know that he hears and knows the cries of our hearts. So that is what I say when, when I say that we can know God's plan for our lives and, and walk away from it is not to say that we're deliberately going against God, deliberately walking in the opposite direction, deliberately going with the world. But it's, it's, it's to say that Sometimes you don't even realize. Sometimes you don't even realize until you're there and then you wonder why or how you got there. For anyone who deals with addiction, who it only takes one time one time starting on that addiction. One time is all it takes. And that one time leads to another and another and another and another and another until you're so far in, you can't get out. It's such, it's the slightest descent, almost unnoticeable. But even if something were off by one degree. Eventually, you wouldn't realize it, but eventually you would be at the bottom. How many times do you think David hit rock bottom? How many times do you think David fell out of that will? Because it's not a matter of, ah, oh, I'm in... Now just, um, okay, I can't, I can't get off, otherwise that's it. I think the thing is that from a day-to-day -day basis, we can come in or out or in or out or in or out of God's will. And that's our choice. That's completely our choice. We know that David would often talk about his highs and his lows. And we know... That David, just like any other man, just like any human, failed. He sinned. He fell short. But it says that all have fallen short of the glory of God. What does that mean? It means that only Jesus is perfect. And if only Jesus is perfect... then of course we're going to, to fall into those things and, and find those temptations because we're human. But Jesus came and made a way so that we could step beyond that and step into his grace and go, I have something greater for you, something greater for you than just this, something more for you than just this. Yes, sure, sure, with those things. God can pull us out of those things. However long it takes, God can pull us out of those things. But the most important thing is, no matter what we've done, no matter where we go, we can always come back to God and go, God, realign me with your will. Set me back into the place where you'd have me be. So it, Sometimes we don't know the plans. Sometimes we don't know what God has for us and there might be those who say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the one who God has forgotten. God doesn't have anything special in store for me. 
maybe a lot of um, a lot of tragedy or a lot of hard things have happened throughout your life, and maybe you haven't seen um, any sign of God moving or working in your life. The truth is, he is working. And if you ask him, he'll tell you what, um, what plan he holds for you. I mean, we know what Jeremiah 29, 11 says. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for good and not for evil. Plans to give you a hope and a future. He knows. He knows the plans because he has made those plans. For he knew you. He knows you by name, but more importantly, that he placed you together. Every part of you, he designed you. He created you. As you, not as Fred or Bob or any other person. He created you as you. He didn't create anyone else like you. And that's the truth. Why is that? Well, he says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So God has, has a plan and a future for you that he hasn't given to anyone else. And it's just to you. And yes, you might go through hard times and all these things. And I'm not saying that God causes these things. But he turns and he works all things together for his good. So he uses situations and circumstances we have gone through for his good. You might be going through something right now that is hard, that is unbearable. You might be going through a lot of pain, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of hurt. But one day... God might just bring the right person in around who's going through that same thing. And you'll be able to say, I've been there. You'll know what to say to them. You'll know because you've been there. You've gone through that. And there'll be a word of encouragement that will lift them up out of that. He has a plan and purpose for each of our lives. What I believe, I, when I think of God's kingdom, I think of it as one great big puzzle. Each of God's children is a piece. Now, the thing I love about a puzzle is you can try all you want, push all you want, shove all you want. You are not going to be able to put a piece in, in a place of another piece. No piece can replace the other. Each is unique, and that's why I can't bear it. Chloe, Chloe's really good at puzzles. I just, I just leave it all to her. I, I, like, I think I probably last five minutes, and then I'm done. Yeah, sometimes that's just putting the corners in place. Just, just the corners, the four, four pieces. <laughs> but he has a plan. He has a plan and a purpose, and it is good. It is good. I'm reminded of the Israelites. They came, they went, they came, they went out of God's presence. 
out of God's will. They went to the idols. They went to all the other things but God. They turned away from God. What did God do? Well, he still had a plan for them. You know, the promise way back when that God made with Abraham, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't just trampled in the mud. It wasn't destroyed. It wasn't ruined based on, oh, these people are now far away from me. They've turned away from me. No. Because each time the Israelites turned away, God still brought them back. Each and every way he did bring them back, he still brought them back. He still brought them back, that they would remember who their God is. That he has a plan for us. Isaiah 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. So then how are we to say how God is to do something? How are we to say how God is to take us from A to B? Because he has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. And that if we walk according to his will, to his purpose, that he'll bring us into alignment with his will. We don't have to worry. Yes, some days, some days you might say, shut up to your brother and be out of the will of God. And, and another day, you know, <laughs> you might shortchange someone at the cash register. <laughs> Not saying by pur- purposeful. But I guess what I'm saying is it's impossible to stay in the will of God every single moment, every single day. The best we can do is what Jesus said, to abide in the vine, abide in him, that if we would abide in him, he would abide in us, that he would transform us, renew our minds, renew our spirit, that he would fill us and overflow us with the power of his Holy Spirit, that we can be effective in fulfilling what he has called us to do. If we could just have the worship team. Now, maybe you're going through some hard times or maybe you might be doing something that you felt God has called you to do and told you to do. And maybe you feel that you aren't the right person for the job. I knew that. I, I, I know how that feels. I've been there. I was saying that for the first year, year and a half of my internship. The truth is, God doesn't make mistakes. If he has called you into something. He knows what he's doing, for one. You might think, oh God, don't pick me, I'm the worst choice. But the truth is, you're his first choice. You're his first choice. He handpicked you for that. He handpicked you and each and every one has a calling on their life. And it might be different It might be different, but that doesn't make it small. Every part is important to play. That's why I love seeing that picture of that puzzle. 
Because until you put the last piece in, it's unfinished. It's unfinished. It's not as it's not as it was intended. Every piece matters. Every piece. And it said, God says it's his will that all would come to him, that none would perish, that all would turn away, that, that would turn away from the sin and come, come to him. They would call upon his name and be saved. That's his will. He actually doesn't want anyone to perish. But he wants all to come to him. Why is that? Because his love, because he is love. So no matter what people tell you or people say, when God puts something on your heart and he puts something in your heart, go with it, pursue it, because God doesn't make a mistake. And yeah, you might feel like you're not fit half the time or you don't know what you're going to say next. But he says that he'll teach you. He'll be your teacher. He'll guide you. It says that if we don't know what we ought to pray, we just ask the Holy Spirit. We just ask the Holy Spirit. He'll tell us what we need to pray. We just start praying. It says that the, the Holy Spirit will intercede for us by the deepest groanings, things that cannot be understood, but things that speak out the deepest desires of our hearts. And those deepest things are the things that God has placed there. Those are the things that are true and pure. Not those things corrupted by the world, but the things that God has transformed. Thank you, Jesus. Holy God. Yes, Jesus.
is the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. shaken, Lord. will not be shaken, Lord. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Bless you, God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, yes, Lord. Mm. Yeah. Yes.
let that be your prayer. Let that be your prayer before we go today. Let that be your cry. Let that be your cry. We'll not be shaken. We'll not be moved. We'll trust in God in every situation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless you, God. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. Thank you, God. Just lay hold of that. That's been the theme of the morning. We're not going to be shaken. No one like Jesus. We're following the best we could ever follow. No one like the Christ of glory. Just for a few moments, just put your trust afresh. Do something symbolic. Pretend you're grabbing his hand. I don't know, just do something. It says, Lord, I'm following you. My circumstances might be challenging, but I'm not going to be shaken because my trust is in you. You're absolutely, entirely, ever reliable God. And you will bring me through. You will be the one who stands by me. You do have a plan. Live stream, thank you for joining us. We pray God's blessing on you as you leave us. And for us here, we're going to pray God's blessing on you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. What a God. What an awesome God. Isn't he wonderful? We will not be shaken. I don't know that there's too many people that can say that today. But we, the church of the living God, we the same.